Right, so it doesn't actually complain, but uh, you can see here the result of that operation is that x is a single value, and uh, that's not what we want, right? We know that for big X, the mass fraction, we've got a series of values there, and so we expect to see a series of values for little x. And uh, the reason this has happened is uh, is clear here. You see, the result of this, you've got a vector here, x, right? We know big X is a vector because of uh, this lin space here. So big X is a vector. MMA is a scalar, so that's a single number. So this statement here is going to produce for us a vector. Then down here, this that's the same quantity, x over MMA, so that's a vector. And then uh, 1 minus x is going to be a vector, and so that's a vector divided by that. So uh, these two things uh, are going to give us a vector. And uh, we've got here vector slash vector. And, and that slash has special meaning. It's what we want is for each element in uh, the vector up here to be divided by each element in the vector down there. So we actually need to dot divide that. So we spent some time talking about that in the last lesson. Anyway, uh, we now have big, big X and little x, and let's plot that. So plot uh, big X um, on the x-axis and little x on the y-axis. And uh, we want to label those axes. So let's be a bit specific here and say mass fraction x. And uh, as I say, the argument for x label must be a string here. So we can include text like that. I like to use the convention that uh, we use some, uh, some phrase to explain what the variable is. And then in the square brackets here, the units for that variable. In this case, it's a mass fraction. So we can just say dash. It doesn't have units. Or uh, to be a bit more specific, you can say kilogram per kilogram. So those are the dimensions for big X. And then uh, looking at the Y label, uh, we can say here mole fraction, mole fraction little y. And this one will be moles per mole, moles per mole. All right, and uh, this one should be the Y label. All right. So that's the plot, and uh, let's just run that. X01. So that's what the figure looks like. Um, so that looks fine. It's just that this curve is quite misleading. This curve looks very smooth, and this implies to us that we have values for uh, the mass and mole fractions for all values along this curve here. And uh, in fact, of course, we don't. We only have values at intervals of 0 0.1. That's, uh, remember, that's how we created that vector. So, well, sorry, not at 0 0.1, at uh, intervals of uh, 1 over, what is it, 31. So, uh, so let's ask that we view the specific points that we have. So instead of plotting solid lines, which is the default, we override that solid line by providing uh, a third argument, this x here. So now it's going to replot that line using crosses instead of a solid line. So here's the result. And uh, you can see now it's showing us the actual values there. So that's the data that we actually have. Now let's, uh, just to make this a bit different, let's plot here um, the, uh, the, the mole fraction for component B as well. So in this, uh, in this space here, well, okay, okay let, let's label here small x a. That's going to be the mole fraction of component A. And then we know that the mole fraction of component B must be 1 minus the mole fraction of A. So 1 minus little x A is your mole fraction of B. And uh, so we can update our plot command here. We can still plot all this against the, the mass fraction of A. And uh, we want to plot 
this time on the y-axis, xa. And then let's plot here. Um, again, we are plotting against uh, the, the big X, and this time we are plotting XB in that position. And for this line, let's use instead dash, uh, dash O, the letter uh, O, and uh, that's going to give us the second curve. So this time we'll need a legend to distinguish between the two. So legend mol fraction a and uh, we can call this variable x a uh, a neat little trick in matlab is 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 if you use the underscore here it will um, when it prints a on the screen it will subscript that for you so let's let's put that in mole fraction a and uh, let's just say well for consistency we've we've said here um, moles per mole, so that's what we need to say here. Mole per mole per mole, and then the other curve will be quite similar to that. So let's just copy that and paste it there. Mole fraction of b, and so that's going to be x subscript b. That's also mole per mole. Um, yeah, that should be fine. So let's run that, and you can see now that's your plot. So we've got the uh, the two curves with the legend here that uh, is sitting over the data. So let's just shift that, and uh, that's the plot. So you see the plot command is, is quite easy to use in MATLAB. And uh, we, we can use it to visualize our results quite quickly and easily. Um, there are obviously many other things. There, uh, there are commands for visualizing 3D surfaces and so on, which we'll see as we go along. For now, the plot command will be fine. Um, there is one other, uh, well, there are a few other things to, to just remember. Um, first of all, we can create subplots. So within uh, a window, within a figure, we can create more than one set of axes, and uh, that's accomplished using the subplot command. So in this program, if we didn't want to plot the X, uh, XA and XB on the same set of axes, uh, we could instead have done it this way. So let's just copy this out here. So I'm just going to come back to that. Let's leave this plot here. And I'm going to write in here subplot, subplot 2, 1, 1. I'll explain what that is just now. And then I'm going to copy out here this text. And I'll explain what that means now. So here, subplot 2, 1, 1. The first two arguments are the the values that you would use to create a matrix of plots. So uh, the first argument is the number of rows of subplots, and that's the number of columns of subplots. And uh, this, um, this argument is the number of the plot that we want to provide the plot on. So in the, in the statement up here, uh, we have created on, a certain, on, on the active figure a two by one set of plots, and in the first of those plots, we are going to plot x and uh, x sub a there. And uh, in the second subplot, so we have to update the stud argument to be two, we're going to plot xb. And uh, let's just suppress this. And uh, it's going to label the last set of axes that was active. So let's just look at the result there. Right, so that's the output. You can see it's created these subplots, and uh, it's it's positioned the curves in the uh, in the subplots that we had specified through the use of this third argument here. So you can, of course, label this uh, the set of axes as well. So if we just copy these.
let's just associate this with that subplot and these labels here with this one. Um, that's mole fraction, and let's just be specific here. This is mole fraction of A, and this is mole fraction of B. So we don't need this legend anymore. Right, so I've used the percentage sign there. I don't think I ever explained that's how you comment in your code. Um, if you put a percentage sign in front of anything, the text is retained in that file, but uh, MATLAB doesn't, or the compiler doesn't execute that statement. So that's, uh, that's EX01. I think I forgot to point out that uh, using the uh, the underscore, we've got the subscripts now for those variables. All right, so we've got a nice looking plot over there. We can also title those figures. So if we write in here, title, and uh, if we write in mole fraction XA, so let's just copy this mole fraction XA, right? It's a bit of overkill that we're doing now. We're labeling mole fraction XA. But anyway, let's just, for the sake of using the title command, if we use title, that's going to title your plots. So running this, you can find here mole fraction XA and mole fraction XB. Right, that will cover you for almost all your plotting requirements. But uh, if you're in the position that uh, you need to adjust any of the properties of these plots and uh, the standard commands aren't useful to you for that purpose, and this does happen, uh, as, as versatile as this appears to be, there are many instances in, in which this will happen, then uh, it's, uh, th there are some additional options in MATLAB. So if you type in here A equals GCA, um, this will create a handle to the uh, current axi uh, current set of axes. So this is get current axes, and uh, you see it returns this number, which doesn't mean much, but if you say get A here, then you see a whole bunch of properties coming up, and uh, these, are, uh, these are the properties of your set of uh, axes, and you can amend any of these things. So... Um, Let's look for something that, uh, for instance, font size. Let's uh, let's change that. So to change the font size, the command that we use is set a comma, and then the property that we wish to change, font size, and let's reset that at the value of 8. So let's see. If you look here... Um, We've asked for the handle to the to the last set of uh, axes, so this was the last one, and you can see the the font size here is a little smaller than that one, um, and because it is, it, it's able to give us a few more ticks here. So that's one instance of how we can uh, we can amend the properties. There are many many properties in here, and for instance, uh, there's a parent property which uh, if we look at the properties for that, so if we say get a comma parent, then that will give us the uh, the properties not just of this last active plot, but uh, of of the whole uh, the whole figure here. So let's uh, let's say here get a parent. Um, well, let's save that in another variable b, and then let's say get b then you see you've got the properties of the figure here as well. So there are many, many things you can do with these plot commands, and uh, there's quite a lot of versatility. Um, with get and set, there really shouldn't be any sort of figure that you can't uh, get the right results from. So that's it for visualizing and plotting results in MATLAB.